for this sequence is support right and so we're going to be using um, some yoga props um, things that you can find around the house to just help you and support you in creating these asana poses that was once designed for Indian men and little boys so just be mindful of that of why your body right whatever body type you have may not exactly fit into what is the appropriate asana pose. So I have this cushion, I have some blocks, I have a strap, and then I also have pillows, right? So you can use a pillow, even you can use this pillow as well um, to replace your blocks, right? Because everybody's not just buying blocks. So I just want to make this accessible for everyday people. So we're going to begin in an easy seat, sitting on a pillow or a bolster, um, whatever is comfortable for you, even a block. And then an easy seat. So having my, sorry, actually this would be cobbler pose. There are a lot of different names for it. And just having your butt down, elongating your back, your spine stacking all of that and maybe just holding your hands at your feet at your ankles and just take some breath here to center yourself allow yourself to be present in today's practice and maybe bring forth uh, what support means for you and what does that look like in your life So we're going to begin here by doing some lateral stretches. I always love to do that if you haven't noticed. It just helps me to wake up and slowly build into the other poses. I'm going to raise my hands above my head, continuing to stack my ribs over my pelvis and having my crown of my head on top of all of that. We keep facing forward, palm the hand facing each other. Lifting up and then placing that right arm down. And then lifting up and over to really get that lateral stretch. Maybe even walking my hand a little bit further to really deepen that stretch. Holding this for three, two, and one. And now I'm just gonna swing to that left side and lifting up and over to that other side. Holding this for three, two, and one. And I'm gonna release that. Do some shoulder rolls. So lifting my shoulders up and then kind of like pushing them back, trying to squeeze those shoulder blades as if holding something in between them. And then putting them down, forward, squeezing forward, and then lifting back up. And just do a few of those. So forward, up, back, down. And then maybe do the reverse, right? So down, back, up, forward, down, back, up, forward, right? Maybe just moving our shoulder blades in ways we would have before. And I want to lift up this right arm and just bring it up over my chest, using my left arm to help and anchor it to really bring it around my chest. Holding this for three, two, and one. And then I want to do the same thing for the left, just bringing it over my chest, using my right arm to pull it in, and really holding it towards my chest for three, two, and one, and shaking that out. And so I'm actually going to turn back way and grab my strap. You can use a strap, a belt. Um, if you have those little bands that you exercise with, you can use that as well. And so I'm going to face this back way so you can see it. So I'm going to lift this left hand up and over, bringing the strap behind me, right? And then I'm going to put that left hand to touch my right shoulder. 
We're really getting that back stretch. And now I'm going to use this right arm and just try to grab that belt and really try to bring my hand up to really have that tension. And this is great if you are not able to have your hands to touch in this position. And you can just use this as an extended hand, holding this for three, two, and one. And then release that and do the same thing on the other side. Right, so lifting this right arm up and over, using the strap as an extended arm to grab that. And just really pulling that and holding this for three, two, one, and release. Right, and shaking that out. Right, so there's no perfect way, in my opinion. All right, but just making sure you're not doing it too hard. Next, we're going to move into these um, tabletops, right? So when we're in tabletop, sometimes this can be a lot of pressure on the knees. And so you can get a blanket, a towel um, to put on your knees, or maybe you can put some pillows, right? And then that really alleviates the pressure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For tabletop, right? So I'm still going to have my knees hit width apart. And I'm still having my shoulders under over my wrist. I just have to do a little bit of wrist work here, just rotating in a circle, right? Circling my wrist, putting pressure the more I lean forward, and then do the reverse. And then just have them facing towards me, my fingers, and again do some circles to wake up my wrist. All right, and then shake that out. And now I'm in my tabletop. I'm gonna tuck my toes and lift up and back into my downward dog, right? And this downward dog, you can actually put your blocks so that you can bring the ground higher up to you, right? So when you do your block, you have three different weights, I mean three different heights. This is height one, where it's at its largest surface. Then you have height two, and then height three is the tallest. So depending on how close you want the ground to you. Right, so I just place my hands here, still having my fingers engaged, right, and just holding this for three. Two, one, and I'm gonna look forward and walk my feet to my hands, and now I'm gonna fold, forward fold, and once again having the ground higher up, right, to alleviate the stress and the strain on some parts of my body. Right, so here, just placing my hands maybe allows me to have my knees a bit straighter than I would usually have it. I can really just sink into this pose, really just give in and alternating between my left and right being bent. And then here I can do some revolve forward fold. So keeping my left hand down, lifting my right up and over, opening up that chest to this right side of the room, and then maybe bending that left leg to really deepen that stretch, holding it for three, two, one, and now I'm doing the same, lifting up this left arm, opening the chest to the left side, bending that right knee and holding it for three, two, one, and down, and just pedal that out. Right, and then now I'm going to place the block on the highest and then lift up into a half, a half lift, flat back, still engaging my torso front and back, still lifting, having that straight line between the bottom of my torso all the way to my head. And then release. And I can even have my forward fold in this as well. Right. 
now I'm going to place my hand on the mat and I'm going to step down into plank pose or I can do modified plank and then put pillows or blankets here as well. Alright, so I'm in plank and then I'm going to lower down, untuck my toes and lifting up into cobra, really squeezing, engaging my legs, opening up my heart, dropping, lifting up and back into downward dog and once again maybe grabbing my blocks in this asana. Okay. Really deep into that stretch. Holding this for three, two, one. Alright, so now I'm gonna lift up my right leg, my three-legged dog, stepping it in, and then using my block to aid and place my hands for my low lunge. In this low lunge, I still want to have I still want to have my knee over my ankle, that back foot really sinking into this stretch. And now I have someone to put my hands to kind of help and maybe alleviate the tension in this stretch. And so holding this for three, lifting my chest up, breathing into those tight areas. Two and one. And now I'm going to straighten this front leg and walk my hands back. And again, using my blocks to help in this half split. Need to know, maybe having my knee slightly bent to alleviate that and holding this for three, two, and one. Right, so go back into this low lunge. And I'm actually going to pick up this back leg and lift it up. And then scoot up a little bit more so I can now be in pyramid pose. So where I have both toes face forward, a kind of a triangle here. And now I have knee to nose. Really stretching this front leg. And if this is too intense, I can always put the block to the highest level. And now I'm still at pyramid pose here. Still hinging at the hips. And holding this for three. One and zero. So back to mending that knee, bringing back down to low lunge, bringing that back front foot back, and now I'm going to move into downward dog. After I change my hairstyle. All right, lifting my butt up and back into downward dog and pedaling that up. Same on the other side, lifting up my left leg, stepping it through into this low lunge here. Really sinking and holding this pose. Ooh, off the mat. And holding this for three, two, and one. Shifting back, forward fold into a half split. Need to know for three. Shifting back into low lunge. Bringing up that back foot. Toes pointed forward into my pyramid pose. Forward folding, knee to nose in this pose as well. Holding with the three. Two. And one. Flowing back into that lunge and then back into that downward dog and just pedaling that out. Right. And I'm going to look forward and walk my feet back into that forward fold again. Okay, so I'm going to just open the circle of my hands up above my head. Maybe have them at prayer hands, maybe looking up at them. And then release my hands down by my side. Asana. Forward fold. Back down. Tuck that out.
my block to my thigh. Hands out, step back into plank, shift forward, lower, cobra, down, up and back into downward dog with the block or not. So I'm going to lift up that right leg again. This time, bringing it through so that the shin is about parallel to the front of the mat. And we're gonna get into pigeon pose. I'm gonna slide that back foot down, kind of as if I'm doing a split. But the idea is for this shin to be parallel with the front, right? So ideally, right, most bodies may not be able to have that perfect right angle. And so whichever, whatever, however it feels good to your body, just make sure you keep that knee out. And sitting, really sitting and sinking into this pose, which can be very intense, right? A lot of pressure here, very tight, not beginner friendly. Maybe using a blanket or two or pillow to put underneath that right butt and thigh to really kind of alleviate that pressure and bring the ground closer up, right? You can also use a, a block. And then now that I really alleviate it, it allows me to sit in it without leaning to one side. And I can stay here. Or go into a sleeping pigeon by just going to my forearm and holding this for three. And again, just sinking and releasing. Trusting the blanket, trusting the pillow. Get out of that, lifting up, bringing up, untucking that back foot, lifting, and then bringing that right foot back, and then get back into that downward dog and coming that out. Maybe doing some bends and doing the same thing for the left. So lifting up, three legged dog, parallel that shin, and then put that blanket right there underneath the booty and that left leg, that back leg. Engage and just be mindful that both both sides of your body are not going to be the same, and so one may be a little bit more open, more tight than the other, and that's okay. So that's why we have support through people, through things to help us if one side is a little shakier than the other. So I'm going to that sleeping pigeon and just holding this for three. And one, up that back foot, lifting up and back into that downward dog, stretching that out. Next, we're going to drop back to our knees, moving my pillow. I'm gonna need my block and I'm gonna get into a bridge pose. So, in bridge pose, I'm gonna do what I usually do at my legs while hip width apart, finger, my middle finger being able to reach my heels but not too close, right? And so, I'm gonna place my block right on my tailbone and on my booty, and that's already going to help to alleviate, you know, bring it up if that's too much. But even with the block here, I'm still going to squeeze and engage, right? So lifting up my pelvis and my chest, bringing the block here, and maybe if I need that support, and depending on how high the block setting is, you can just intensify the stretch, right? Maybe you're on the flat surface, maybe you're on the second one, or maybe you're all the way at the top one. And so I'm gonna go to the second one, right? And I'm still not resting too much on the block and just sitting here flat, but still engaging, pressing my feet down, squeezing my thighs, pressing my hands down, 
and really engaging and having that kind of like as a, a safety net. And holding this for three, two, one, and then bring the block out and then drop down. For me, the block really kind of like intensifies the stretch is like not allowing me to go down and kind of sink. And I really have to hold that pose and engage, right? So do two more. The setting of your choice. I'm gonna go back to the second one. Lifting up my pelvis, my chest, and then squeezing my thighs and holding this. Two. I really still not allowing myself to really squeeze my hips, not letting my butt and my pelvis rest on there, really lifting up my pelvis, squeezing my thighs together, lifting my chest up and my chin, and then maybe even try lifting up one leg, and then bringing it back down, and then doing the same for the left. All right, and then now moving the block to allow myself to drop on the ground and just breathe it out, breathe in, so that you can now rest. Okay. So now here we are. Now I'm gonna move into Shavasana where you can definitely spice it up a bit using different props, right? You can put your pillow on your head, right? You can also even put blocks by your feet if you kinda of wanna alleviate that um, lift your feet up, right, you know. And put them right here, whatever's most comfortable for you. Just allow yourself to feel comfortable in this asana. Allowing yourself to sink deeper. Fingers can naturally curl, feet can naturally turn out. Using the props as support as a guide to make you comfortable. So if you have more time to stay in this asana, I invite you to do so. If not, begin bringing energy to your fingers and toes. Maybe bending the knees and dropping them to one side, transitioning up into a, from a fetus position, right? as a rebirth, right? And using today's practice as a metaphor to real life. Allowing yourself to utilize your supports, your aids, your props, anything in life to help you be successful and be the best you, right? And so let's bring our hands together, palm center, palms together, heart center. The light in me to the light in you. Thank you so much for joining me today.